Okay, thank you, Klein, for this introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. My name uh, is Quirine, and um, I'm a UX designer at Fabriek. And today I'm going to talk about a project we did for Tate. And we call it From Wayfinding to Dayfinding. Um, first, a little bit about Fabriek. Fabriek is a strategic design agency based in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and Delft. And um, as being uh, one of the bigger agencies, design agencies in the Netherlands, we are part of the Dutch Digital Design, which uh, Krijn also introduced uh, this morning. And we are with more than 100 people uh, working uh, on a lot of creative work, uh, from digital design to product design and service design, and also for many different clients. As I just mentioned, um, the, the project I'm going to talk about today is uh, we did together with Tate, the British Museum. And um, we also work together with our partners Q42 and Northern Light. And why I'm going to talk about this project is because it's actually a really good um, example, I think, for uh, the theme of today, which is where digital meets the real world. So let's start from the beginning. Um, I'm not in front of it. Um, this was the question that Tate asked us. Design and build a mobile wayfinding experience that will help you in our in-gallery audience navigate the abundance of activity and art available in the multiple physical sites across the UK. So that's a lot of words. Um, in, uh, if we take a bit of a closer look, we see it's about the in-gallery audience. And the in-gallery audi audience tells us that it's actually about the visitors who are, who are physically within the building. So we need to consider um, behavior within uh, a, a building. This is the problem that they mention. They say, we want to help our visitors to navigate the abundance of activity and art. So they have a lot of art, I will show you in a moment. Um, and how can we help them find their way uh, more easy? And actually, they already talked about a sort of solution. They want a mobile wayfinding experience. So um, what we could have done is immediately, immediately start brainstorming and think about our first concepts and ideas. But we thought, no, we want to experience how it actually is to be there. So we wanted to go to London, and we wanted to visit Tate Modern and Tate Britain and observe um, the visitors and how they navigate within the museum. So that's actually what we did. And uh, I will take you along with our insights. Um, but first, a little bit more about Tate. Tate is uh, an art institution in uh, the United Kingdom. And they house the United Kingdom's collection from the 16th century uh, until um, actually the present day. So you see a lot of this. But also contemporary and modern international art. So also something like this. They have four galleries within the UK. Uh, two, as I said, in London and two, uh, one in Liverpool and one in St. Ives. And if we have a look at the biggest one, which is Tate Modern actually, um, we see that they received 4.7 million visitors during, uh, in 2015. And if we compare this with our biggest museum, uh, which is the Rijksmuseum, we see that it is actually twice uh, the number as um, within the Rijksmuseum. They have, uh, as I said before, a big collection. So over a thousand artworks they have uh, actually on display. And uh, during the year they have more than 100 uh, ex exhibitions and activities, and approximately 16 every, every day. So that tells us that they uh, change actually quite frequently uh, their exhibitions and their activities. And last summer they opened uh, a new building, that's the building behind me, and um, it provides the visitors actually 60% more space to explore more art and explore more activities. And also, of course, it has, it, this is another part where we um, want to help the visitors find their way. Um, this is all about Tate, but what if we look at um, the visitors themselves? Um, two, two researchers from the Centre Pompidou, they defined actually uh, four visiting styles. And um, I tried to find a picture where we uh, captured all of them, and I think I found one. Um, what we see is a visiting style which we call the ant. And the ant is someone who um, visits complete exhibitions. So it moves along the exhibition route, it moves along uh, all the details of the artworks, and it uh, actually spends a lot of time doing that. But we also have the grasshopper, and the grasshopper is a bit of the same kind of visiting style, but um, 
it only has an interest in particular objects. So it pays a lot of attention, but it uh, skips certain parts of an exhibition as well. The fish is more the, the opposite of the ant. So it likes the open space and it likes to uh, have a look at the bigger picture instead of the details. And um, the last one is the butterfly. And the butterfly, um, he is mainly discovering. He doesn't follow uh, a certain route particularly, or he um, changes his route uh, quite often. Um, the butterfly is just interested in everything. And what, um, what we learned from this is that you cannot um, put a visitor in, in one visiting group. The visitors are really different, and you need to take that into account when you start designing. A, a mobile experience that is for the whole public of, uh, the, of Tate. If we, uh, when we had a look at um, the wayfinding in the museum, we saw actually that the most of the people already have something in mind when they arrive at Tate. So they want to see a certain exhibition or a certain activity. And the physical wayfinding signage, which, is, which you see over here, is um, actually quite good. People can find what they uh, are looking for, and um, they don't get uh, lost that often. But at the moment, people are done with what they uh, are doing, what they came for. So, for example, their exhi their uh, exhibition, they we often found often found them in this position, and I can show you a lot more of these images and. What actually happens is that people just sit in a transfer zone, as we call them, and just play around with their smartphone for a while or thinking about the next thing to do. And we figured if people um, um, do this and actually don't know where to go, uh, um, uh, don't know what to do next, then of course the physical wayfinding is also not going to help them. So we thought we can actually make a difference with a mobile wayfinding uh, experience if we make it a day-finding experience. So if we can help people decide what to do next. So there's where, uh, within the project, we said it shouldn't be only about wayfinding, but it should actually be about day-finding. And if we talk about day-finding, we uh, think that the goal of day-finding is uh, to help people get the most out of their visit and their time at Tate. And we... Um, we thought we can, do, uh, we can do that in different ways. Actually, two main, main ways to do that. And of course, the, the first, I think, is very obvious. It's, I just showed you, showed you. It's to help visitors curate, visitors curate their visit in the gallery at the right moment, when they feel like it. And also enrich their encounter with art. So when they are in an exhibition, how can we help them to um, make a richer experience with, with art? And from our observational research in Tate, we, we saw that there were two main things from a user perspective, and that is that wayfinding, uh, or actually day finding, is very personal. And the visitor needs to be in control and needs to decide for himself what he wants to do. So, um, based on these ideas and these insights, we said, okay, we want to create a concept, a mobile, a mobile day-finding experience that's actually your intuitive, relaxed, and friendly companion to Tate. And why do we want it to be a companion? Because a companion knows where you are in the, in the museum uh, and what you feel like. So if I want to, um, uh, if I'm just uh, wandering around or maybe if I'm actually visiting an, an exhibition. And that's why we said, okay, then we want to make an app, because an app is on your smartphone, and your smartphone is actually always with you, so it makes it quite personal. Um, but of course, the app needs to know where you are in the museum then. So here's where we um, said we want to work with beacons, and I've placed one beacon at the construction uh, pillar over there. Um, it's a small white, white thing, and you can see it's actually really small. And what these beacons do, they are, uh, for the people who don't know them, they are actually um, small devices who send out uh, or transmit a, a Bluetooth signal. And your iPhone or your, your smartphone is capable of picking up that signal and, and uh, perform an action accordingly. We, what we did is we placed these beacons in every room of the museum, so uh, the app knows in every part of the museum where you are. And you can think, okay, what does this do with the overall look and feel? Because now we have devices in our whole museum everywhere. Um, it's not the case. It's, as you can see here, there is one in this image. 
it's actually below the evacuation eva evacuation sign and it's really small so you don't uh, it doesn't bother you um then actually the question uh, for, for I can imagine you have in your mind right now is, okay, if it's an intuitive companion, but how does it work? Well, I'm going to show you based on a, a, a little journey we're going to do uh, in the gallery. And we start over here. We've just finished this exhibition. It's materials and objects, and it's in Tate Modern. And we, we're just done. And we um, sit down for a moment. We get, grab our smartphone and we want to have a look at uh, the other things that we can do in Tate today. So we grab our phone and we open the app and the app asks us, asks us the central question, which is, what do you feel like doing? Do I feel like seeing more art? Do I want to do an activity? Or do I actually want to take a break and go to the cafe or a shop, for example? And these are the main three um, things people have on their mind when they, uh, uh, when they are in the museum. So I think, okay, I would like to see a bit more uh, art. So I start scrolling. Uh, I see for every level what kind of exhibitions there are right now. But I think, well, yeah, I just saw an exhibition actually. So I would like to go back to the home screen and have a look at the activities. So when I'm opening the activities, I see that they are or sorted by time. So the one that's uh, upcoming is on top. And I see in approximately 40 minutes there will start something. But yeah, I don't want to see this. I, I'm going to look for a bit more. So um, here I can see as well. These are activities that are on today. Oh, but now the app knows that I'm in a transfer zone and it gives me a suggestion. Maybe you want to see this. And actually I think, yeah, I would like to see the exhibition Living Cities. So I click Take Me There and it opens the wayfinding mode. And in the wayfinding mode, you see where uh, you are right now, but also where you need to go. So we start navigating. And if we slide to the left and the right a little, we can also see what is uh, in the other area, in the other levels. But OK, for now, I wanted to go to level one. So I continue, uh, 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 I continue navigating. And when I'm at the right level, the app tells me that I'm, uh, that I'm there. So it gives me the confirmation. I continue with a floor plan of level one so I can see again where I am and where I need to go. And it follows me around. And what we said is that we don't want any other yellow uh, suggestions while you're navigating because then the app knows you are on your way to something so you already have something in your mind. Well, I've arrived at the Living Cities exhibition and um, again I get the confirmation and I say continue. And the app automatically switches to the right page. I'm there and I want to see a bit more about this exhibition, so I start uh, uh, looking which rooms are in this exhibition. And I actually like uh, the second one, which is Living Cities, and I'm already there, so I'm going to take a second look at what I can find here. I can read a bit more about the room, so we have uh, uh, added room descriptions, but also uh, an overview of the different artworks within the room. And um, I see there is an art work with an audio, an audio piece. So that's this one. And again, I can find more information um, uh, about the artwork. But artwork details and descriptions are not really uh, innovative, of course. Um, and audio is also not really innovative. But for a museum, it's actually a really nice. Mark Bradford is oh, an artist based in Los starts. Angeles. He's an African-American artist who's based in an area called the Mount Park. Uh, historically a uh, black neighborhood of LA and uh, he grew up working in his mother's barber shop and in his early work he would well, this is a small part of a piece of audio that is uh, in the app for several uh, artworks. And what we thought is really nice about audio is that it's actually, we think, the best form of augmented reality in a context that is like, uh, that, uh, like in a visit in a museum. Because in the end, it's about encountering art and it's about uh, focusing on art and you shouldn't have something uh, in between like a screen. So we wanted to minimize the uh, time, uh, the amount of time spent on your screen and actually more focusing on art. And that's why we think the audio is a really nice uh, layer um, to encounter art. 
Another example of what we did is um, it might that, of course, your smartphone is in your pocket and you're just visiting around and you're wondering uh, what it is, what you're seeing here. So you can take your app again and uh, open it and we introduced a locate me uh, function. And it's going really quickly, so I'm going to tell you uh, up front, there is an icon in uh, the top right of the screen and if you click it, it shows you immediately the page where you are at the moment. So again, it is location aware. So here you see I'm opening the app. I click the top right icon and I can see it shows me the right page. So in this way, it makes it really easy to just navigate the, the, the museum. And once you, f you feel like it, you can find more information. Another example is the push notifications. Um, the notification, the, the yellow one you just saw, we also send them as push notifications. But what we said is it needs to be uh, silent. Most of the push notification notifications are silent because we don't want to spam the user and it's, uh, the user needs to be in control. So actually, if it's in your pocket and you don't turn to your smartphone, you don't see these notifications and they will also disappear again. Of course, you can, if you um, uh, turn to your smartphone at that exact moment, you can interact with notifications and actually um, uh, react on them. Um, but most of the time, you might not notice them. Sometimes, however, we say, said to Tate, you can use an attention-grabbing notification because, for example, when I'm in an exhibition and in 30 minutes um, from that same artist a presentation starts, I might want to know um, and I might want to join. So then it's a relevant moment and it's a relevant uh, notification to send to you. Well, this was... Um, uh, we launched the, the app last um, uh, June, and uh, what did we learn uh, from uh, that moment on? Well, we uh, asked some users, and there, was also, uh, there were also some st statistics, and these were actually our main three learnings. And the first one is notifications are, uh, unfortunately, not yet as uh, intuitive as we would like them to be. And it's really an advice to Tay to keep on experimenting and keep on uh, fine-tuning these to, to uh, make them in, in uh, content really good, but also on the right time. People could uh, really easily find their way within the, the app, so the navigation within the app was really simple and clear. And um, people also confirmed to us that they really like the audio, and it's really an extra uh, experience to your encounter with art. So to conclude, I would like to say that um, with this project, we wanted to create an app that is actually um, non-intrusive and non-immersive, and it should actually be in your pocket most of the time. So we don't want people to get stuck in a digital experience while there is a lot of, uh, where there are, are a lot of nice things to see actually in the real world around you. And I think with this app, um, we made, and I hope I've shown you this in this presentation, uh, a really nice example of um, actually a digital experience that um, not only meets the real world, but actually enriches the real world. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Karina. Yeah. Um, I wonder when this project started. Mm -hmm. I could imagine that the, the owners of the museum, their biggest wish what, was that everyone would put away his phone instead of grab it out of the pocket. Was that also a scenario, just block all phones so everybody would pay more attention, or do they...? Uh, no, they, no, they actually... Um, their question was actually to think of a mobile wayfinding experience. So they, um, um, they actually thought of also techniques like image, image recognition or um, visual augmented reality. And that's where we said, well, these techniques, we actually don't want to use them because it, it uh, asks you, for, um, uh, not forces, but it asks you to uh, take your phone and put it in between you and the artwork. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we didn't want that, and that's why we thought of other ways to, uh, uh, um, to make it less in intrusive. But, it, it, sorry, to answer your question, it was already uh, an, a question of Tate. They to already took techniques. that step yeah. to... Because uh, yeah. there's this, I think, famous picture of uh, the, the Nachtwacht in the Rijksmuseum. It's, it's on Facebook uh, everywhere. And then 
kids or, or teenagers are sitting on a bench and they're all in their phone. Yeah. And then some of the reactions are, uh, what a stupid guy, this is the most famous mm -hmm. painting, etc. And the other says, but maybe they're doing educational stuff on their phone. So the picture doesn't tell, but that's yeah. still the challenge, I think. If I use this phone, I still get this update from sport matches, whatever. Yeah. But they believe the app is so good that I'm not distracted by other mobile push yeah, well, what we chisel. Yeah, of course, that can still happen. And um, I, I do think that in the moments that people are um, uh, pausing for a moment and uh, when they are in those transfer zones, they will they will um, read the news or they will yeah. have a look at their WhatsApp. It's or part Facebook. of life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we're not gonna we're not gonna um, um, remove that. And I don't think that's necessary. But when people are are busy with art, um, the the app shouldn't be in between you and the art. If the art is good, and it is. Uh, yeah. Um, and one more thing, if you want to use the, the beacons, etc., then you, of course, or well, anyway, you have to install the app, so you have to persuade yeah. the visitor to install the app. Yeah. Do you have any, I mean, is that a challenge? How, how many people actually do that? Can you share that? Um, well, that, uh, yeah, that is a challenge, but um, that is also a challenge for Tate. I think they what they need to do is, uh, um, yeah, promote it. What I said, uh, now it was a soft launch, so they didn't promote the app that much, mm -hmm. but uh, when they've implemented these first learnings, they're going to, uh, make it more public and yeah they they need to um make um a pl publicity for uh yeah okay. downloading the so app. we have to wait yeah. till the okay. yeah well, of course you can already uh that's good to, s to mention it's for the iphone uh, only right now but uh, next year it will also be for android a so lot of people have android you know right? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. it's it's on the planning it's yeah. on the planning okay yeah. well thank you and I, at least i've learned when i'm in a, mu in a mu museum i'm a fish so uh, yeah okay. thanks a lot <laughs>